Welcome to Conlang Critic, the show that gets facts wrong about your favorite Conlang. I'm Jan Meesley, and in this episode, we'll be looking at polysynthetic Esperanto, Poliespo. Like a lot of Conlangs I've reviewed, I first heard about Poliespo when people started requesting it. It's most likely that this video is your introduction to Poliespo as well, and for that I am deeply sorry. Finding detailed information about this language is difficult, but everything I could find pointed me to one clear conclusion. This is the worst Conlang I have ever heard of, and I have to see more of it. The official documentation for Poliespo was, to my knowledge, exclusively released in Esperanto, and the only copy of that documentation I could find online literally has holes in it. Even if it was a perfect digitization, the formatting is very frustrating to read. I was able to get some help from Joey Jojo on Discord translating the most important parts, but I still had to suffer through the original Esperanto to get some more minor details. Needless to say, researching this language was a nightmare. Another useful resource is an archive of an email conversation from 1993, which also appears to be the primary source for the Wikipedia article about Poliespo. Poliespo is an international auxiliary language, I think, created by Billy Ray Walden, also known as No Tohiada Idehesti Sequoia. It's a polysynthetic combination of Esperanto and Cherokee, and Billy claims that learning it is your golden opportunity to acquire a Native American spirit, a phrase with some troublingly racist implications. Oh, and get this, if you can get someone else to join the Poliespo organization, which exists, you'll automatically get 20% of their membership dues and 20% of all money they give to the organization over their lifetime. Get the fundamentals of Poliespo now, for only 20 Swiss francs. And, uh, there is one other thing about this language's background that it would be irresponsible not to mention. Serious violence mentioned content warning coming up, so if you want to, you can skip to the timecode on screen. Billy Ray Walden, Poliespo's creator, is currently on death row for several violent crimes, including three murders. This is obviously horrifying, and I'm not trying to make light of it or anything, but it is, however, an important bit of context because if the copyright dates on the Poliespo documentation are to be believed, his crime spree happened before he created the language. Moving on, Poliespo's consonants are m, n, m, n, p, p, t, t, ch, k, a, b, d. J, d, b, k, f, s, s, sh, h, 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 v, z, z, j, w, l, y, r. So first things first, some of these are supposed to be nasally preaspirated. I am definitely pronouncing them incorrectly. Anyway, this is a lot. I don't even know where to begin. There are just so many bad decisions on display here, it's almost incredible. I guess I could start by just explaining what exactly it is you're looking at here. Since Poliespo is based on Esperanto, its inventory is an extension of Esperanto's inventory, with sounds added to it allegedly so it can accommodate the new Cherokee vocabulary. Now, for an IAL, I think Esperanto's inventory is already a bad start. The three-way k h h distinction is especially bad for an international language. The thing is, while I'm far from qualified to speak authoritatively about Cherokee phonology, none of the descriptions of Cherokee I could find provided any explanation for why exactly all of these new phonemes are here. Like, here's Wikipedia's chart of Cherokee consonants. Some of the most distinctive things about this inventory are the complete lack of labial plosives, the lateral affricates, and the labiovelar plosive. Poliespo doesn't include any of these things. In fact, it adds a whole new labial plosive. This consonant, as far as I can tell, has no reason for being here, like, at all. I'm pretty sure that it's in some way from Cherokee qua, and those pre-aspirated phonemes are from something that specifically happens in Oklahoman Cherokee, but everything else? No idea. Speaking of no idea, there's two more letters that are supposed to be phonemic consonants, specifically ktsa and ktsa. Billy specifically says that these are pronounced as one consonant, but what exactly that's supposed to mean is unclear. I don't think we have to do whatever that game show thing was called this time, right? I've seen a couple of people suggest that when an Oxlang's inventory is incompatible with English, I should do the opposite thing, where I try to find the most common language with a compatible consonant inventory. Given that Foible claims that a pre-aspirated bilabial nasal exists in approximately no languages, let alone a nasally pre-aspirated bilabial nasal, I think it's fair to say that this isn't a very newcomer-friendly inventory. Well, you know what they say about when you can't say something nice. Polyespo's vowels are e, e, u. A, 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 o, a, a, o. 
That vowel written with Q there is defined in the IPA with that reverse epsilon letter, but it's then called the vowel specifically in the American English pronunciations of words like girl, shirt, and fur. Since he specified American English, it's probably actually supposed to be more like er than uh. Anyway, each of these ten oral vowels comes with a corresponding nasal vowel, and also there's phonemic tone, I guess? The way tone works is explained very poorly, and I can't confidently say anything about it other than that it exists. I think there's three phonemic tones, but I'm not sure. It's just, I seriously don't have the words to describe this. This is supposed to be an international auxiliary language, right? I am interpreting world language correctly to mean language for the entire world and not language that exists in the world, right? The conlangers who discussed this language casually in the middle of a conversation about language acquisition in 1993 didn't completely misrepresent what it's trying to do, did they? Okay, so I guess to be fair, one of the main things Poliaspo is trying to do is make it possible to communicate more quickly than in most natural languages, and for that specific goal it makes sense to have a larger inventory. That said, this isn't a particularly good large inventory. Aesthetically, it's all over the place. I made fun of Sambasa, but Sambasa knew what it was trying to do. Poliaspo's inventory looks like Billy just threw in everything he could pronounce and called it a day. It's straight up bad design, easily the worst I've seen. Ugh, the orthography though. Much like the inventory, the orthography uses Esperanto as a starting point, which, for the record, is not a good starting point. H circumflex is horrible. As for how the new things are handled, well, it's definitely not ideal. The pre-aspirated consonants are written with a brief diacritic. Esperanto's wild use of the circumflex is extended to include T circumflex for th and Z circumflex for kts which, as already mentioned, has zebri for gz to go with it. And that's far from the worst stuff here. Before even getting to the vowels, let's talk about the labiolabial stop and the voice dental fricative. These two phonemes are written as two overlapping letters, p with pw and th with tv. This method for creating new letters makes a lot of sense in a typewriter and in no other context. Even if it was possible for me to type these on my modern computer and my modern word processor, the way these look is just so bad, it's so hard to tell what you're even looking at for either of them. And the thing is, it's not like typewriter compatibility was Billy's top priority or anything, because you can tell in the document that he couldn't type most of the diacritics and had to write them over the letters by hand, so what's even the point of these? Oh, and I almost went right past the glottal stop. Glottal stops are indeed phonemic in polyespo, but they're also completely unwritten. Why? What's the point? And then there's the vowels. I breathe and A slash are okay, I guess? I mean, I'm okay with them in comparison to everything else, because this is where most of the clever reuse of unused letters comes in. I basically skipped right over Y for H, but there's also X for A, uh, Q for U, uh, and W for O. I think I get where this idea is from. When Cherokee is written in the Latin alphabet, its nasal vowel is written with the letter V. I actually think that's a good solution. V was historically a vowel letter, after all, and Cherokee has no use for it as a consonant. This, however, isn't that. It's a random remapping of unused letters just because they're available. It's garbage. And this still isn't the most baffling feature of polyaspo orthography. So polyaspo's vowels can be nasalized, which is indicated with a circumflex. There is, however, an exception. Nasal schwa isn't written with X circumflex. That's the nasal vowel in Cherokee written with V, so it makes sense that it would be counted as its own thing in polyespo. In polyespo, nasal schwa, uh, is written, I kid you not, with the number two, because the number two looks kinda like a nose. Oh yeah, and remember how this language has poorly described phonemic tone? Well, rising tone is written by putting an acute on whatever vowel, and the other tones, which exist, straight up aren't written. It does apparently matter for grammar things what tones vowels have, but you have no way of knowing what tone you're supposed to use for any vowel if it isn't rising tone. This orthography is bad. It's transparently inaccessible, infuriatingly unintuitive, and worst of all, very, very ugly. Looking at polyaspo text gives me a headache. It's like it was specifically designed, with me specifically in mind, with the intention of using the Latin alphabet in a way that's as disgusting as possible to me personally. Since polyaspo is supposed to be a combination of Esperanto and Cherokee, I was excited to see what cool Cherokee words would be added to the core vocabulary. I heard tales of a focus on sound symbolism and the possibility for polyaspo to function as a pan-Iroquoian language. Disappointingly, polyaspo only has two new roots directly from Cherokee. The Cherokee influence is there, just not in the vocabulary. Nearly everything else is directly from Esperanto. Osillo replaces saluton as the basic reading, and this is directly from the Cherokee word for hello, osillo. The other Cherokee word in polyaspo comes from the word dohi, 
which means peace, harmony, and well-being. It's a nice word, and for some reason it's loaned to polyespo as toho. And that's it. It's just those two. I guess that's a good pair of words, but it really could have helped polyespo build its Cherokee Esperanto identity if it had some more words like them. Another fully new word is the pronoun P, a gender and animacy-neutral third-person pronoun, because Esperanto doesn't have one of those. One fun consequence of using P for this is that P is already an Esperanto root. Pia means pious. That means that the adjectival form of P can't be Pia, so instead it's Pies. What else? I guess there's some standardization for country names, which makes sense. In Esperanto, there's a few different ways that toponyms and demonyms can be related to each other. But in Polyespo, the basic root always refers to a person from the place, and you add a suffix to derive the country itself from that root. There's not really that much more novel vocabulary. Almost all the major changes Polyespo makes to Esperanto are in the grammar, not the vocabulary. Polyespo is polysynthetic, which is meant to make it so that you can speak polyespo more quickly than Esperanto. A basic example would be something like bananzana placerla, a one-word sentence which means I don't like bananas. Polysynthesis is the main thing polyespo borrows from Cherokee, combining roots together so that single words can contain the information of whole sentences. Another grammatical feature inspired by Cherokee is the question marking suffix ch, a combination of the Esperanto particle chu and the Cherokee suffix tsu. Polyespo has a lot of suffixes for things like that. The definite article la, for example, becomes the suffix ow. The way this suffix works, and others like it, is completely different from how Esperanto usually works, which makes it even weirder when something is exactly the same as an Esperanto. Sure, nasal vowels marking the accusative isn't the best idea, but if you're gonna do it, do it consistently at least. You gotta commit to your bad decisions. Oh, I should also probably mention how Polyespo deals with Esperanto's very bad system for marking gender. Quick reminder, in Zamenhof's original version of Esperanto, every animate noun in its basic form is implied to be masculine, and then there's a suffix you can use to change it to feminine. Everyone agrees that this is uncontroversially bad, so most Esperantos don't use it that way. In addition to his new third-person pronoun, Billy incorporates the almost standard masculine suffix each. Bare minimum achieved. Congratulations. But rather than stop there, Billy goes one extra step and adds in a special way of really not specifying gender by replacing all the vowels in the word with other alternative vowels. The existence of these forms kind of messes everything up. If there's a way of specifying feminine with in and a way of specifying masculine with each, why would you need a specific way of specifying that you're not specifying? Looking at which examples are given for when the masculine suffix is useful and for when the alternative vowels are useful reveals the unfortunate answer. All the examples given for the masculine suffix are animals, you can say katicho for a male cat, and the examples given for the alternative vowels are all humans, you can say kurzo for a cousin of unspecified gender. The implication is that this system is definitely not as ne sexisma as it claims to be. Men are still the default, just only when you're talking about humans. Anyway, polyespo has two registers. The polysynthetic register is called idpo, and the other register is called zaespo, which functions more like normal Esperanto. By which I mean it has completely unmodified Esperanto grammar. It's recommended that if someone doesn't understand what you mean in idpo, you should repeat yourself in zaespo. In other words, if someone doesn't understand you in polyespo, you can speak Esperanto, and that counts as still speaking polyespo. What I like about this feature is that it's like such a clear admission of defeat. If you have to find a solution to a problem where someone who hypothetically already speaks your language still has a hard time understanding it, something has gone horribly wrong. I kinda wish I was able to go more in depth about how the polysynthetic stuff works, but this document is completely impenetrable. And don't get me wrong, I'm like pretty good at reading Esperanto, so it's not that. It's just the way it's formatted makes some parts literally impossible for me to read. Like, there's almost three whole pages of charts that look like this. What does any of this mean? Billy, you can't just say, here's a table of profixes and leave it at that. What are these profixes? What are they used for? Why does Google Translate translate profixoi as profits? I have literally no idea. It takes up a lot of the documents, so clearly they're important, but if it says anywhere what they are, it's buried somewhere in the unbroken lines of heavily abbreviated Esperanto with no paragraph breaks. My best guess is that these are used for indicating the subjects and or objects of verbs, but I have no idea what any specific one would be used for. The following text is, uh, I don't know, it's from somewhere in the Polyespo document. It's short, but also I don't care enough to try to get a longer piece of text in this. O sio sami de anoi, zo felicia que tagal decidi, lingvelerpa proyecto fin fine alveno. All in all, Polyespo is bad. As far as I know, it just might be the worst oxling that has ever been made. Even in a vacuum, completely separated from its creator, Polyespo is an absolutely horrible auxiliary language. Up until now, I haven't come across an auxling worse than Vautgil. It's been my reference point for just how bad an auxling can be. Polyespo is worse than Vautgil, but Vautgil is so much better than Polyespo that comparing the two 
at all is an insult to Votgill. The chasm between Votgill and Poliespo is vast, and here at the bottom of it, it's impossible for me to believe that it's truly empty. There are dozens of amateur creations worse than Votgill, but most of those have never been seen by anyone but their creators. Projects abandoned out of frustration or scrapped after realizing their low quality. While some of these unknown Oxlings creators have made better conlings since, most of them were discouraged and quit conlinging altogether. And so maybe some of those ex-conlangers might find at least some comfort in knowing that what they made was still better than Polyespo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I'll be reviewing Kaelin. Black Gill. Black Gill. Jan Misley here. Did you know that my second album, Latin Extended D, is available to download on Bandcamp for only $1? And that it contains songs like Could You Edit It? Dreams of Our Conglang Community, What the Bodies Built to Scale, Seximal Fractions, and What If We Kissed in 2019, my tribute to 2010's internet culture that took five years to make, and that buying it is a great way for people who can't commit to a monthly subscription on Patreon to support my content? Oh, and thanks to Jules for being in the end theme for the rest of the season. You should definitely go check out their SoundCloud. Okay, see you next month.